Good morning. Uh, going through the list of sponsors, I thought this was going to be a festival which would last 365 days. I haven't seen so many sponsors partnering one youth conference. Obviously, you are doing something right. Entrepreneurship, to my mind, is a, is a very tricky subject, especially in today's times when Anna Hazare turned entrepreneur last year. Ram Dev is currently an entrepreneur as we speak. Most people in India's parliament are entrepreneurs. We've had one entrepreneur who's absconding from the law in our neighboring state, Haryana. So I don't know what entrepreneurship really means. I'm going to share my personal examples with you and talk about how I've seen life. Uh, it has made me very unpopular, which I don't care because Winston Churchill said the only person you've got to be popular with is your wife. I'm straight and I'm a bachelor, so I really don't need anyone's popular polls. Uh, people say I'm obnoxious and arrogant. I am. I don't suffer fools. We have so many and we have too many people being kind so they can keep suffering them. But let me, let me share how I believe life should be and how my life was and is. I was born and raised in Calcutta and I was taught three things. The value of learning, the value of honesty and the value of being on time. Which is why I actually love what you guys did today. I don't, I don't accept speaking engagements in a hurry because they inevitably run late. I'm delighted you started seven minutes earlier. What we were also taught in Calcutta was to say things as they are, to never lie, because lying always catches up with you. Now you might think what I'm telling you is a bit trite and not meant for college students, but we've all become ace bullshitters in some way or the other. We believe we can con our way through. You never can. You always get caught. And the ultimate prize in life is not about being successful, about having money, or about having too many girls by your arm. I think the most important lesson in life is to be able to sleep a good night's sleep without Valium or, you know, smoking up or being on cocaine or heroin or whatever the hell you all use. Not you all, but you know who I'm referring to. I think what Calcutta also taught me was the virtues of scholarship. And there's a difference between knowledge and education. Education stops. Knowledge is unending. You stop education when you stop formally going to college or going to a skills institute. But I think what you continue is with your passion for reading. That to my mind is scholarship. Reading which is unfettered, reading which is borderless, reading which doesn't confine you into some silo or some tunnel. I would spend hours reading every day and I still do. I would still say I go through about four to five books a week. Now that's an excessive amount of reading but trust me it's better than googling the next hot chick after Veena Malik or something like that. It's far more relevant, it's far more interesting. The second thing when we were growing up in Calcutta was we were taught the art and not the art as in taught, but we were told why it was important to be good at public speaking. I won my first motorcycle thanks to Delhi University because there was a debate called the Mukherjee Memorial at St. Stephen's. And you know how Stephanians are, pretty stuck up until they're clobbered in a debate. And then everything else, you know, falls by the wayside. So the Mukherjee Memorial, the Hindu College debate, these were debates that we took part in and we enjoyed them because again there was something to do, it was cerebral and it was about casting an opinion without actually hitting someone. Finally I was also a great believer and still am, in fact I'm doing a play once again on the 1st and 2nd of September, this time in Singapore. Theatre was an abiding passion. Now I'm not telling you this because these are important things for each one of you to suddenly start doing, you know, go out and debate and go out and do a play. But it's very important to do things that you're not expected to do. It's very important to follow a life that is not part of your curriculum. It's equally important to enjoy life because all of us in our rush to get to the next milestone have stopped living through the contours of a joyous life. We've all become stressed out. We all want to grab the next milestone. We want to be competitive rather than honest. 
We want to do things at the cost of others rather than do things at the dint of our own strengths. And that to my mind is something that will weaken you as you go along. Whether it's good or bad, I don't care because neither am I going to be your local guardian or frankly do I care. But the reality is, this is how I'm seeing the youth change. So when people say we have a youth conclave, I think it's very important for you to understand that you can, like Rahul Gandhi, remain youthful for the rest of your life and be president of the Youth Congress. Or you can actually decide that from youth, you will get to adulthood at some stage in your life. I started working at a salary of 650 rupees in 1990. 650. When I came home and told my dad, my dad said, the chauffeur earns four times your salary. But again, the salary was not important. Today, when you interview young people, the first thing they ask is, what is C to C? So I always tell them, I've heard B to B, I haven't heard C to C, which is cost to company. If you get your priorities wrong, you're going to be screwed for the rest of your life because that's how you're going to judge the quality of your life by. And the quality of life is not judged by cost to company. It's by V to C, if at all you want to use you know, smart allocky alphabets. It's the value you provide to a company. And I started work with Ogilvy. I went around every conceivable market that you can imagine. Today when people talk about Bihar, in those days, it was undivided Bihar, not the province that I'm talking about, but where Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh were part of it. And when you went out, uh, you saw the kind of poverty, but you also saw the kind of opportunity. It's another matter that our politicians frittered away that opportunity that Bihar has, and at that point in time seriously had with all the natural resources that exist in Bihar. I then started, uh, well, God was kind, work was hard, but I still must share this secret which is pretty well known in corporate India. I never work after lunch. Because I think that is meant for civilized people to either sleep or read or go for long walks. So I had a deal with Ogilvy as management trainee that I would work till one o'clock, but I wouldn't come back to the office after that. So this, the reason why I'm telling you these things are myths exist about life. Life is not about how long you work. Life is about how smartly you work. Life is not about long hours. Life is about longer commitment. And I think that somehow we've kind of missed as far as life is concerned. To cut a long story short, I then joined ITC, was their youngest uh, marketing manager handling cigarette brands, launched Classic Miles, was told by, that, by the chairman at that time, chap called Chug, that it won't work. Well, obviously he retired, the brand is now number one in that category. Then I joined uh, Peregrine, which is an investment bank, because I wanted financial experience. And in 1996, along with Martin Sorrell, started Equus, which I gave up in 2006, which my brother now runs. I have nothing to do with it, because I was tired of meeting brand managers who didn't know head or tail of the businesses that they were responsible for. And in 2006, I was actually sitting at the Taj in Bombay, smoking a long cigar, in those days, the world was far more civilized. You could smoke indoors. Today, everyone gets upset. And uh, I had retired, and Mr. Tata and Mr. Krishna Kumar were walking out, and they said, what the hell do you want to do? I said, I want to only consult, but with only chairman and CEOs, and that's what Councilage does. So we work across the world. It's a one-man company, and that's what we do. The reason why I do this is because it allows me to engage with some of the most formidable minds across the world. It also allows you to see a perspective that you and I often don't get to see. It also gives you the chance to spend more time doing the things that really interest you. Work must only be a passion. It can't be your lifetime. So I would have some suggestions to make and we'll, we'll have a longer Q&A. My suggestions to you would be Think of the three things that you've always wanted to do and attempt even one of them. I finished my bucket list in 2008. So I'm living on extended joy time. Tomorrow if I get 
run over by a stationary bus in Delhi, I have no regrets. Because the advantages are you've done everything that you wanted to do. You know, you've traveled the world, you've met interesting people. There's very little that you have full, f f you know, funding your greed. And often what happens is we keep shifting the goalposts because of avarice, because we want more. There was a very interesting topic, a debating topic in IIM Calcutta, I think in 19 night timeline. So if you keep asking for things, if you keep needing things, they don't necessarily happen. What does happen is it builds a huge, a huge amount of distrust of the system in people's minds, which again is not necessary. The values that I look forward to I don't care whether you have them or you don't have them. It's not relevant for everyone to have those values. I think we live in very troubled times. We live in times where almost every day there's something driven by an agenda which may, we may not have set. You look at the way our politics is going. You see the way our civil society movements are headed. They're not headed in the right space. I was the first person on the 9th of March last year in a signed article on the edit page of the HD saying that Anna Hazare would do himself no service by having team Anna. There are no statues of committees in any parks. It's always about individuals. And the biggest tragedy was to have something called team Anna when you could have easily called it team India. It was important to co-opt every Indian into that movement as every Indian was in a manner of speaking co-opted. About Ramdev last year I said this man is seeking immunity immunity from all the cases that the government has against him. You've got to say what you genuinely believe. You will get into trouble. I've been sued by ITC for 800 crores uh, for tweeting about its chairman. I have no issues with that. That will be a case that will be fought. And will be fought on merit. Do I have enough dirt on the ITC chairman? Of course. But will I release it? No. Because you don't play games that way. You play games in a fair way. Will I be screwed for 800 crores? I don't have 800 crores. So if I go to Tihar and start losing weight, I really don't care. The other thing that I genuinely believe is that we've started crawling when asked to walk as a society, as people, as people in, the, in, in industry. I'm a great personal believer that Narendra Modi is good for development. He may not be good for equality in society. But we still have very, very right, uh, very left-wing liberals who believe that everything about Narendra Modi is bad and yet they ignore the fact that today's rulers were the ones who presided over the Sikh riots in 1984. And no one wants to say anything because it is politically incorrect. So I would urge you to do the following and I'd stop after that. I'd urge you to say what your heart really tells you to. Whether you're romancing a girl, if you don't like her aroma if you think she has body odor tell her she'll take care I mean the same goes for women if you think your man is a cat tell him be honest because you will spend far too much of time trying to manage the lies or the web of deceit that you've erected the second is read 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 until you die we will never know enough about anything we never will. That's, that is why we are different from the animal kingdom. The animal kingdom is unilateral. It's linear. We've got too many exciting things happening in our lives. I've always said science is not about exploration of other things. It is about the reinvention of man's mind. You're reconfiguring your mind to assimilate, to absorb, to sensitize yourself against various issues. Number three, you must revel in the arts. See plays, smell the flowers, go for long walks. If you want to be a great marketing guy, spend hours observing people. Not just the pretty people, but observing people, observing their behavior. When was the last time you talked to your domestic help and actually asked them about problems in the villages? They will tell you about a real India more than any of these other jokers who pretend to be either economists or television anchors. Be extremely respectful of elders. 
I'm a bachelor. I'm delighted I live with my parents. I mean, my parents lived in Cal. I moved them to Delhi. I'm delighted. Now, it's not fashionable. But we are not birds that we eject out of the nests that our parents have created. There is a lot of wisdom, sagacity that you can get by talking to your parents. It's only your parents and your dog which will give you unconditional love. Everyone else will either want a Louis Vuitton or a Birkin or whatever the hell these bags are. You know, I'm only referring to the... But it's true for men as well. But respect them with passion, with a certain sense of genuineness, and learn from them. Don't have more than five friends. You can't. Once again, Churchill said, if you have five friends that you can count on your five fingers, it's a life well lived. Learn how to distinguish and differentiate between friends and acquaintances. Always be apolitical as far as you can. When I say apolitical, I'm not saying don't join a political movement. Of course, go ahead and kill yourself if you want to. But remember, in this country, you will never have an independent opinion if you join any political party. Because there is feudalism no matter where you go. Today, an Advani at 80 doesn't want to let go. They never do. I was asked in London last week at a, at a speech, what do you think about India's democracy? And Mani Shankar Iyer was debating with me. So I said, look at this man. He lost the elections. He's now in parliament as a nominated member. We're the only country which predicts future prime ministers and we're supposed to be a democracy. So that's the reality of our politics. Be apolitical but have a finite ideology. And my final point to you is give, give, give until it hurts. Mother Teresa said this outstandingly in 1980 when she was addressing the United Nations. It's very important for us to share. It's important to look after people who are lesser privileged. They're not lesser privileged because they don't have the, the skills to be privileged. They're lesser privileged because they've, they've been denied the opportunities to have those privileges. There is nothing more distasteful, disgusting and disgraceful for India to deny the opportunity of education, of health to its children. There is nothing more derogatory and it's a bloody farce that we worship all these goddesses when we abuse our women. I've said on Twitter yesterday that you must start executing molesters and rapists. But you know, we will pretend to be this fine democracy which has this robust judiciary which must tolerate the Kasabs and the Jundals and now the Kandas and before that how many thousands of others. You can't have a country which disabuses, which abuses its women and be throbbing. I was addressing the National Literacy Mission the other day and I said, my marketing logic tells me you educate a man, you educate one person. You educate a woman, you educate four. Because she will make sure that her entire family imbibes the values of robust education. So that's all I have to say. Have a great life, smile more. Don't be stressed, you are going to die in the long run. So why do you want to rush towards, you know, hell or heaven? I mean, hell's going to be more fun. In heaven you might, you know, bump into Khrushchev or Yuri Gagarin or someone like that. Smile more, learn more, talk more, converse, dialogue more. You know, today the youth, you meet them, I mean, their, their only conversation was her. There's more to life than things being up or down. So, that's all I have to say. I'm no, I'm no Ramdev or Arvind Kejival who's going to tell you how to change the life, how to change the life of India and how to change yourself. No one gives a shit. You know, Gallup in 1999 ran a poll across the world and they said, people care for three things in this order. Number one for themselves, number two for the family, number three for the country. So that's not going to change in a hurry. I believe as, as someone who's risen from the ranks, that it's an outstanding country we live in. It's a country which respects talent, which respects merit, we have a lot of rogues that we have to deal with who sit in parliament and elsewhere. 
But that's the fun. There's never a dull moment in India. Obama and Americans and British have to worry about, you know, pollution. Or we have to worry about simple things. Will you get pinched on a bus this morning? So, you know, life is, life is far more fun being an Indian. And finally, being patriotic is not important. Being nationalistic is. And I'm saying, be proud of what you have. Don't, you know, curse what you don't. Because it, never meant, it was never meant to be yours. Be happy with what you can do for others. Because that's what we are all about. We are not a society that can be built on individualism. We have to be a society that is built on unity. And if we can do that, your life would be very, very well lived. Thank you. <coughs> sure. So, shall I use this? Thank you, Mr. Seth, for your words. I'm sure all of us can take something from them. I'd like to open the house to the question and answer round now. Why do I criticize? Because there's nothing left to be happy about other than your question. Part one, why am I multi-skilled or no, why have, I, why have I got interest in other things? That's the way we were. That's the way many of us were brought up. We weren't brought up to be linear peacocks strutting about. And if you have a mind, which I hope you do, and if it is expansive enough, not expensive, you should learn a lot more. Who's ever told you that specialists are required? You're not going to be a plumber in your life. Plumbers, electricians are required to be specialists. In England, even today, the most valued professional is a general physician. It's not a cardio, cardiac surgeon. So, and you know, you're right. Why do I have an opinion on everything? Because perhaps I read everything. A, B, perhaps I can articulate that. If you can, I'll tell Ornob, he'll invite you to the next show. But be ready to be mauled because you've got to take him on. I'm sorry, my answers are reasonably short. Comment on the Indian judiciary. I think the Supreme Court by and large is... We have never... Okay, there were the last two Chief Justices, not this one. The last two Chief Justices, certainly the last, was the most corrupt son of a bitch we've ever had. Pardon the French. Okay, the most corrupt. But here's the bloody tragedy. Now this fellow, whatever his name is... What's your name, my friend? Aluwalia, Anu, Anugrat. Okay, doesn't matter. I'll call you Anu. Now, Anu says, why do you criticize? Why don't you get your people to also criticize? No one has the balls because everyone's got an agenda. The fact is, this government knows that Balakrishnan was corrupt, that he made money hand over fist, and now what makes him the chairman of the National Human Rights Commission? Now, here's where I'm different from the rest of you all. Ilk. I was the first person while he was Chief Justice to say that on Pranoy's program. And Pranoy almost had a heart attack saying, we'll be shut down for contempt. We weren't. Because remember, Lord Buckner brilliantly said, I mean, Justice Warren Buckner brilliantly said that truth is the ultimate defense in contempt. That's the tragedy. So when you ask me about the judiciary, it is in a shambles at the lower level. I can tell you today, and we are on what, August the 11th? I will tell you today, every person who went to jail in Tehar <coughs> for the 2G scam will be freed, will be acquitted honorably. I'm telling you this, and we will reconvene next year to see the mockery that you can make of the justice system. Because your evidence gathering is weak, I mean, look at our situation. <coughs> you have a rogue in the form of Kanda. The police knows they have to arrest him for questioning and they allow him to flee. I will
even leave you with one lasting thought because I keep telling you about reading. Read Amartya Sen's fabulous book. It's not an economics. It's called The Idea of Justice. Read that. It will hopefully change your life. In that, he argues very succinctly between, I mean, the difference between Niti and Nyai. He says Niti is process. So when you go to a court of law, you're following a process. But ultimately, Nyai is what you're looking for. That's the benefit. And he argues that justice is ultimately all about fairness. So has the process that you've adopted in its ultimate analysis been fair? So many a time we adopt the process, but we are treated unfairly. Good morning, sir. Sir, I am a great admirer of your unconventional way of thinking. As in, sir, you could have easily got late in any of the multinationals or any of the things. But, sir, the thing that really lies within is that we are all looking for conventional jobs. We are all looking for some kind of job security or some kind of thing that makes us assured about our future. So, sir, uh, is there always a lurking fear or a desire of failure that which prevents the youngsters from starting their own niche skills? You know, I would answer that question slightly unconventionally. It's not that the youth is afraid of failure. The youth is in too much of a bloody rush for success. That's the problem. You think you have an undeniable right each one of you who studies in SRCC wants to be Anshu Jain day after tomorrow. You won't get there. Neither will you become an Arun Jaitley in a hurry. So the point is, enjoy your life and let it happen when it has to happen. If it doesn't happen, you will know. I mean, you know, you'll be perhaps teaching at some IIT, so you'll know it hasn't happened. So all I'm saying is, allow yourself the dignity of time. The tragedy is, everyone is in such a rush that A, they've stopped enjoying the moment, B, they stopped analyzing what's really making them happy. And C, they don't even realize or recognize the value or the contributions they can make. So why would you want to do that? <coughs> I mean, I wouldn't. And I'm sure counselors could have failed. So what? That's why I do 10 things. I could have gone on, gone on and continued with theater. So, you know, it's also important for you to have more interest than one. So in case you fail in one, you don't become a depressive maniac and jump off the ceiling or jump into the Yamuna, which in any case is dry most of the time, so you won't even kill yourself. Good afternoon, sir. As in, we've been talking the past one year, the whole scenario, and we've been talking about corruption, black money, booty scam, this scam, that scam. Leaving all that apart now, I think forget corruption, forget black money, because that is something that is not going to be eradicated from our economy for a very long period of time. Even I, as a matter of fact, I grow, I become a businessman. Somewhere, I will have an urge of making a lot of black money corrupting people. So that is something that cannot be eradicated. And then keeping on commenting on, on such things is not going to help. It's not taking us anywhere. Forget that. I am a, I'm an 18, 19 year old child. What I want to know is what is the way forward. Because I really want to see India change. Because I really want people to actually respect what India is. Not because of its economy or what people are doing, but actually what is actually happening. Equality is what I'm concerned about. You know, you shouldn't even be bothered about that. You should bother about how you live your life. The reason why I get away till now, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow by abusing the government, abusing anyone is I live a very, very squeaky clean life and I'm happy doing it. You pay your taxes. I have never bribed anyone. I have beaten two income tax officers for which I have two FIRs filed against me in Calcutta because they wanted a, a, an amount in cash in order to give me an income tax refund check. I mean, this is how bloody tragic our lives are. You live your own life honorably and it is utter rubbish that because you want to become a businessman, you have to be corrupt. As I said, we have a fantastic country. What you will endure is a significant amount of early pain. 
but what you will also then gain in the process is everlasting delight you've got to decide on the trade off and again as i mentioned you know in my response to the earlier question it's the kind of human being you are i have never ever bribed any person in this on this planet never i have never asked anyone for any help i have not even asked for a bloody gas cylinder connection when i started equus we were without telephone lines without landlines for six and a half months but we had a lovely pco and that guy had a stunning daughter called methali and i would just go to the pco and hang there for the rest of the day you know attempting to make calls and in the meantime chatting up this hot babe so you know actually the government of india has done me a huge favor so you don't have to bribe and it is an excuse of the lazy and the dishonorable to say oh but the system is like that there is no system you and i make the system when you and i blame the judiciary we are screwing up the judiciary we are bribing politicians we are sucking up to them i've hit till date three politicians for stepping out of line in airport queues why because we are not scared and that's why at times television helps because they are shit scared because of you for that reason but the reality is each one of us must you know take cognizance we don't we don't allow, allow ourselves to take a stand and i'm not saying be critical be you take a fair balanced stand like you rightly mentioned about corruption black money is not going to end and who are the jokers the bjp is supporting them how the hell will they fight elections yeah every goddamn election an mla's expense in punjab costs 10 crores do you think they ever declare 10 crores they declare 22 lakhs where's the rest of the money coming from all these jokers sitting in the cabinet most of them they when in their annual declaration they say we don't have a car what the hell do they travel on or what do their ugly little brats travel in on bicycles so let's not fool each other the reality is we're not willing to stand up and be counted and if you are willing to be stand and if you are willing to stand up and be counted you lead a very peaceful life look ultimately it's not how much money you make i'm sure the richest man in the country or very many rich people must be leading troubled nights here saying shit tomorrow i have to manage that guy tomorrow i have to manage this thing gore bech ke so bhai relax and sleep you'll be much better off than all these uh, rich guys and my other which i forgot to tell you in my opening remarks don't be an indian always hope your friends earn much much more money they work hard so that when they are working you can enjoy their riches finally we have women man i thought this is again gender biased Look, I am very fond of the Indian. See, everyone knew Sunny Leone. That is my trick question. Now, if I ask them what is Draupadi's first cousin's name, none of you guys will know. I mean, neither do I. But it's just a trick question. Okay, last two. No, the man can keep his hand down. No, no, one minute. Here, just these two. Yeah. You know, y'all are fine gentlemen. Y'all must yield to women in more ways than one. Yes. Yeah. One minute. One minute. The golden rule about Indian microphones is hold it a bit lower. No. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Don't finger a mic. Now speak into it. Okay. So. Hold it here. Now go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so. No. On the contrary, on the contrary, then you don't either watch all the programs I do, or you have a an opinion which is fine. Day before yesterday, I praised the government. 
Kwa Ramdev. I said, where the government has failed in actually communicating the, the remarkable good that this government has done. Of course. In fact, I, as I said in my closing remarks, I think we are a great country. And which is why I am saying, don't only go and read a fantastic book by Sunil Khilani called The Idea of India. Don't go for the stereotypical. For the, see, I mentioned this day before yesterday on that Times Now thing. There are three kinds of citizens. The engaged, the enraged and the indifferent. From 19... About 1913 to about 1948, we were in engaged India because we were rallying around one single-minded cause, which was freedom from being colonized. From 1948 to about 1963, 64, the Nehru died in 64. Till then, we were an engaged but slightly enraged India. You remember the famous song? Uh, which uh, Sahid Lodhihanvi wrote in, uh, in uh, Pyasa, which was a barb at Pandit Nehru. He says, Kaan the wo vade? So that time. Then came the biggest destroyer of every institution that Indians held there, Indira Gandhi. She destroyed every conceivable institution. We were then an indifferent country. When Manmohan Singh under Narasimha Rao's uh, leadership came back as finance minister in 1901 and we actually unshackled ourselves of all the, the constraints. We became a, a reasonably engaged India again. We then again became enraged during the scam time. And what Anna Hazare did to my mind was fantastic. He made the young of India engage themselves, not with the stereotypical idea of India, but of being Indian which is another book you must read by Pavan Varma. It's called Being Indian, which is a fantastic thing until we see more of this happening. Remember, <coughs> I've always said this, we are a functioning democracy. You can't allow one hunger fast to be, uh, you know, followed by the other in the hope of preserving any form of democratic uh, uh, models. You're creating anarchy and that's what we should avoid. No, last question, yeah, to the lady, to the lady. I'll answer you on the way. Good morning, sir. Uh, sir, I have a really simple sort of question. We talk about reading, you read a lot, and you land a form of reading. Sir, so, and it doesn't include it, it will land a few books, by the part of my son, like this, right? Sir, any book which is perhaps a favorite or responsive writing, which has had the impression that you have had? You want to change your life forever? Each one of you? And I mean it seriously forever? It's going to take you three months from here from the time we discuss it. Just read one compendium. It's called The Complete Works of William Shakespeare. And I'm not saying this facetiously. He is the finest psychologist the world has ever produced. The finest observer of consumer behavior that the world has ever produced. The finest literary movement that we've ever seen. It's easy even today Whatever he says holds true. Look at Julius Caesar, for instance. The good is oft interred with the bones. The evil lives long after. Now you talked about the concept of India, right? And you said Indians. What does he say? The fall, dear Brutus, lies not in our stars, but in ourselves. So I'm saying read just one complete works of Shakespeare. And within that I will flag four plays for you which will give you an understanding of life. You must read Julius Caesar. Read the treachery of politics in Richard III. Read the masterful ways of the world in Merchant of Venice. And then end with the whole respect to elders, which I've talked to you about with King Lear. That's a life well lived. And can you imagine the next party you go out to and you have this dumb guy who says, what's up? And you say the false son lies not in you but in your parents that they bought you up like stale bread. You'll never have these jerks coming after you ever again.